Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'll be showing you a deep learning based collision avoidance demo using NVIDIA's JetBot. The JetBot is an open source robot based on NVIDIA's Jetson Nano. All of the source code used in this demo can be found on the JetBot's GitHub page. This video is gonna be broken down into three parts. The first part will be gathering and tagging data the second part will be training the neural net using PyTorch. And then the third part will be uploading the model to the JetBot and then connecting the model to the data stream coming from its front facing camera. The output of this model can then be used to control its motors in such a way that it won't crash into anything. Before getting into the demo, let me give you a rundown of the hardware. The entire bill of material for this project will be linked in the description. The chassis of this robot is made entirely of 3D printed parts, which can be found on the JetBot's GitHub page. It has a single front-facing camera, a 10 amp hour lithium ion battery, an OLED display that can be used to show system information, a motor driver that is controlled through I2C, and two DC motors with attached gearboxes, providing up to 150 millinewton meters of torque and a zero to 60 time of never. This sweet caster ball in the rear allows the nanobot to turn on a dime. And lastly, the most important part, the Jetson Nano. This is a single board computer containing both a processor and a GPU. It has lower computational performance than the Jetson TX2, but it consumes much less power, about five watts. The GPU has 128 CUDA cores, which can run in parallel and a quad core ARM A57 clocked at 1.43 gigahertz. It has four gigabytes of DDR4 memory, a hardware video encoder and decoder, and many high-speed interfaces for getting data in and out of it. It also has wireless support for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The overall dimensions of this is 100 by 80 millimeters, which is quite a bit smaller than a credit card. The ARM core runs Ubuntu 18.04. So that's the hardware we're working with. Let's get into the first step of the demo, collecting data. In the collision avoidance demo, data collection and tagging is done simultaneously. To begin, I'll be taking pictures of examples where the JetBot's path is blocked by an object. I'm trying to get images from a variety of different angles and backgrounds within my lab. It's important to feed a neural network a lot of data, and equally as important, a good variety of data. Now it's time to take pictures of what a clear and free path looks like. I'll try to get lots of different backgrounds like I did with the blocked path data. Ideally, this data set would also contain many different surfaces and lighting conditions. Just out of curiosity, I'm also going to show objects that are small enough for it to run over, such as a flat piece of cardboard or a twig. And there goes my beer. Great. Well, this is embarrassing. I'll have to clean this up. Or wait, I could use this as data. This is a good example showing how simulations can't capture everything that occurs in the real world. I wasn't planning on spilling this beer, but now in doing so, my carpet has taken on a slightly different complexion, creating a new real world scenario that the JetBot could encounter. Once I've collected 100 blocked examples and 100 free examples, I'll be transferring this data to my PC, which has a 1070 Ti graphics card that I'll be using to train the neural network. Now I'm on my PC. Here is the data that I've collected. There are two folders separating the examples of blocked paths and free paths. This collision avoidance example uses PyTorch, which is a Python-based deep learning library, and TorchVision, which is a package that contains model architectures and image transformations that are popular for computer vision applications. We will start by unzipping the data that we collected and get it prepared for training the neural network. Of the 200 images collected, they will be split into two data sets, a training data set and a testing data set. It's important to test the neural network on data that it has never seen before in order to get a true measure of its performance. Next, the neural network is defined from a pre-trained model contained in the Torch Vision package. This demo uses transfer learning, which is a technique that allows for the repurposing of pre-trained models to perform new tasks that have much less data available. These pre-trained models that get repurposed were likely trained on millions of images. This particular model being used is known as the AlexNet, which was designed by Alex Krzyzewski. This convolutional neural network was popularized when it won a visual recognition competition. Alex's paper detailing this neural net has been cited over 30,000 times. Because this model was originally trained for a data set that had a thousand class labels, 
we will be replacing the final layer with a new untrained layer that only has two class labels, blocked and free. This block of code is where the training will occur, and the trained model will be output as a .pth file. Notice that this for loop will run for a defined number of epochs. A single epoch is when the entire dataset is passed forward and backward through the neural network once. This example will be doing 30 epochs and then testing the accuracy of the model after each epoch. It's important to not run too few epochs as your model will likely not have very high accuracy. It's also just as important to not run too many epochs as your model could become overfit to your dataset. The training is complete. The last 11 epochs were mostly ones with a few 0.96s and 0.98s. This means that the model is interpreting the test data set almost perfectly. The model is 217 megabytes in size. I'll be sending this file over my network to the JetBot through its Wi-Fi connection and then running the collision avoidance program provided in the example. All right, here we go. The gist of this collision avoidance program is that if it detects a greater than 50% chance of collision, it will turn left and it will keep turning left until the chance of collision has dropped below 50%. That's pretty much it. It's still an extremely stupid robot, to say the least. Let's see how it does with its first obstacle. Collision avoided. Incoming light bulb. Can it avoid a black ink pen? Yes. Let's see if it learned that it can run over sticks. Flawless. Now let's just let it roam around the room and see how it does. I swear, my house usually isn't this messy. These are just obstacles for the sake of the video. Good job, JetBot. Here's what the JetBot is seeing as it navigates my immaculately clean house. The bar on the right indicates the probability that the pathway is blocked. Let's try putting the JetBot on surfaces that weren't in its training dataset. The lines in the patio brick seem to be confusing it. Had I included these surfaces in the training dataset, it's likely that the JetBot would be able to navigate them just fine. It's doing a little better in grass, probably because grass is similar to carpet. Incoming light bulb. The JetBot really wasn't sure about hardwood floor. It preferred breakdancing. I actually consider this a feature. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I don't plan on making a ton of JetBot videos as my focus is in electronics and hardware design, but I do look forward to incorporating more AI into my projects. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.